Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. My God, my God. Lord, give us this day our daily bread. I don't know about you, but I need God's joy. I need God's peace. I need God's help. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I thank God for just waking me up this morning. I thank God. Grandma says, start me on my way. I thank God. We forget about the simple things for putting food on my table. A little help, a little strength. I was talking to one of the mothers come in today, said, Lord, this knee gonna move today. Because I was going to church. No matter what. Giving honor to God, the head of my life. And the way things going around here seem like he's the head of your life. Greenview, God bless you for this man of God. Thank you, Pastor, for this opportunity to stand before your house. I know you just don't let anybody stand. So we pray and you pray. Amen. Well, let's pray for each other. Thank God for this choir, all right? All these songs. I don't want to waste your time, um, so let's, let's get to work. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Philippians chapter 4, okay. verse 6 and 7. I want to thank God for my beautiful queen, Michelle. Just wave your hand. She's here with us today, sharing with me. Amen. Amen. So thank God for my wife. Amen. These men and women of God that greeted me this morning, such a gentle soul. I feel the presence of God in this place. Yes, yes. Philippians, I'm reading from the NIV. Philippians chapter 6, uh, verse, uh, chapter 4, I'm sorry, chapter 4, verse 6. I was telling, I don't know why I want to go to chapter 6. <laughs> but chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, and it reads as thus. Do not be anxious about anything. Don't worry. Don't trip. Uh, don't stress. Right. Don't do cheetah flips. <laughs> don't be anxious about anything. But in every situation, be prayerful. Petition God. Be thankful. Present your request to God. Here it is. And the peace of God which transcend all understanding. Watch this. Will guard your heart and guard your mind. Because you know our minds go a little Lulu sometimes. Our mind has a way of going. You tell it to go left and it'll go right. But if you keep your mind, stay it on Jesus. He'll keep you in perfect peace. Going back up to verse 6 where it says, in every situation, that's, that's, that's it, I, that's what I want to talk about. In every situation. Church, there's so much going on in the world today that will cause most people to lose their mind. Chaplain Owens, there was a chaplain who told me, he said, everybody is sick. It's just some people have to take extra pills than other people because there's so much in the world that will cause us sometime to lose our mind. And we better be careful because now the doctors prescribe things for your minds, your situation, and your stress. They used to give you an aspirin, Edvil. Now they're giving you a medicinal stuff. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's legal to do what you couldn't do, to soothe your soul. But you know, the only thing that can really soothe your soul is the word of God. The only thing that can soothe your soul is praise unto the king. You better be careful with all this stress going on in the world. And you say, well, I used to try Jesus. Now I'm going to try this. Or now I'm going to try this. There's so much going in the world 
in the world today. But thanks be to God that he gives us a Bible. Thank God for the word of God that no matter what's going on in the world, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what's going on at your job, in every situation, God's word gives us hope. God's word gives us joy. God's word gives us peace in the midst of a storm. Yeah. And I used to didn't believe it. They say you're either in the storm, coming out of the storm. It's true. Life is a journey. Yeah. It's up one day and down the next day. You're smiling one minute, you're sad the next minute. You're suicidal one minute, you're depressed the next minute. If it ain't you, it's that child driving you wild. If it ain't that child, it's your spouse. Don't look, don't look left, don't look right, because they're next to you. It's somebody. Always getting on your, as they used to say, your last nerve. I used to be puzzled because I didn't think kids really had nerves, you know, generation I came or what. But in our text today, it says, here it is in verse 6, it says, do not be anxious about anything. Now, anxiety is real. Anxiety is real. I, I came up in a generation where, you know, we couldn't have feelings, you know, Pastor, we boys. You know, boys, they don't cry. I've been having this discussion last week. That's why it's fresh on my mind. Boys don't cry. And, and the question was, should a man cry? Mm. Yes. You know, sisters, they cry. Y- y- y'all got more emotions than us. Now, some of y'all sisters harder than us. <laughs> now, I, I don't live long enough to know. Some of y'all sisters can hold it in and put it out. But anxiety... It's true. Uh, It's a mental state of what might happen or what might not happen or what lays ahead. We don't know, but we're tripping out. Body acting funny. Uh, See, I I don't drink or smoke or take medicinal. I got got an eating habit. So when I'm stressing, I'm eating. Don't look at me funny. You do something when you stress. You do something when you worry. You do something when you... You may not eat, but you may drink. You may not drink, but you may cuss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do something to deal with that stress. You do something to deal with that anxiety. All of us ain't calm, cool, and collective now. You know, bless God, those who are. You know, people always tell you, you got to be patient. You, 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 you. Oh, God. Anxiety. It's real. It reflects uncertainty about your future, your present. You don't know about the incidents or the circumstances, whether it's your health or your child or your job or your love life or the climate change. It may just be the downfall of the economy. I was talking to a young lady today, uh, the other day, Pastor, and she said, in about five to ten years, Elders, our mothers, our grandmothers will be homeless because the income is not catching up with the come in. The the end of the month is longer than what you get. And and she said, and if you didn't have a meeting on this, our seniors, many, will be homeless. It's, It's tragic. It could be stress of what's going on in the world. We got war mm-hmm. on every hand. Yeah. Uh, we, we got tragedy mm-hmm. on every hand. I, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. My mother tells me every time I call, she says, some little child is missing again. Mm-hmm. And that's been going on for about the last two or three years. Children are being snatched, and they don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Tragedy yes. in the world, always stressing us out. Upcoming doctor's appointments, mm. relationship conflicts. You know, uh, Chap Owens, when I was in the Army, <laughs> they used to ask me my job. I said, my job was more dealing with relationships than anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Them young fellas, them young ladies, the marriages, it was always a relationship issue. Mm-hmm. You know, <clears throat> I thought something was wrong with me. Because uh, when I talked to people, they said, uh, I'm not having the problems you're having in your marriage. And I found out they were lying to me. <laughs> They were having them problems and more problems. 
Relationship conflict will get your anxiety up. Uh, these young people today, they don't want to get married. Relationship conflict. They slept, swipe left, I think it is, and swipe right. Is that what? Anybody? <laughs> Ain't nobody in here swiping, huh? <laughs> but they swiping left and they swiping right. They said there's no need to get married. That would cause anxiety in me. Mm. I don't want to look at no computer and pick her and pick him. I want to talk with you. I want to sit in front of you. Uh, anxiety in the world today. Our inner thoughts. Imagining things that are real and not real. It can trigger anxiety. Bouts of uh, anxiety. But this word here in the text says, be not anxious for nothing. In the Greek, this word means chill out. In the Greek, this word means be cool. In the Greek, this word means basically be careful for nothing. Stop worrying. Stop being stressed out. I've come to the conclusion either we're going to trust God or we not. We're going to lie on God or we not. We're going to say we believe the word of God, we stand on the word of God, or we not. You can't be double-minded. You can't be on uh, two sides of the road. You can't be on both sides of the fence. You either believe or you don't believe or you're growing up to believe. I'll take that one. You're growing up. You ought not be where you were five years ago. You ought not be where you were ten years ago. You ought to grow up in your faith. Grow up in your heart. Grow up in your love. You ought to grow up. Yeah, you ought to grow up. So what should we do? Well, the Bible says be carefree, full of care. Be, be careful. Stop worrying about everything. Be anxious for nothing. We should have no, here it is, mental distress. Girl, you're going to cause me to put my Christianity down. No. You can't push your Christianity down. Because it's in your soul. It's in your heart. You can't pick this up and put it down. You, you, you can't. So the Bible says, don't worry. Be carefree. But in every situation, here it is. My brother, my sisters, we've got to trust God. Did you hear what I said? We've got to trust God. Listen, all of us who are Christians should be about one thing. And that's trust in God. It's an issue of trust. To stress, to worry, to constantly be fearful demonstrates a lack of trust in God. Mm. Proverbs says, trust in the Lord with all your, lean not to your own, but in all your ways. And he will, will he or won't he? Will he or won't he? Now, I'm not just talking to y'all. I'm talking to me, too. Yeah. Will he or won't he? Because yeah. you know, like I know, when stuff comes at us, it shakes us sometimes. But we got to grab our balance and say, wait a minute. I'm a child of God. Wait a minute. He did it for mama. Wait a minute. He did it. Wait a minute. The word of God says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things be added. Wait a minute. No weapon formed against me shall. We've got to trust in God. So not only should we trust in God, we should be, the text says, prayerful. We, 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 in every situation, you got to pray. In every situation, you got to pray. We must be prayerful in every situation. Church, we must pray about everything. We've got to pray about the big things and the little things. I used to think it was silly when people said, now, Lord, where are my keys? <laughs> but I'm old enough now. 
Holy Spirit, where I put them keys. I'm old enough now where I pray about the big things and little things. I leave out this room and go in that room and say, Lord, what did I come in here for? I have to go back to the room, catch it in my head, and then go back. You got to pray about everything. You got to pray about everything. Church, we must approach God with every problem. Why is it that we call everybody but God first? Why is it we call mama and daddy and sister and brother and homeboy and homegirl? And then we start thinking about calling God. We've got to call on God first. Church, we must pray about the things you care about because it's the path to peace. Prayer is the path to peace. Hey, check this out. Prayer is the handrail to help you hold on. Did you hear what I said? Prayer is the handrail to help you hold on in difficult times in life. Prayer is the handrail that helps us hold on in times of suffering and struggle. Got to give it to God. Let him handle it. Got to give it to God. Let him help you. You got to give it to God and let him handle it. You got to cast your cares upon the Lord because he cares for you. You can't cast it and then take it back, which we have a tendency to do. Now, I'm not, I'm not being hard. I'm just, I've just lived long enough to know sometimes we trust and sometimes we don't. Sometimes we got faith and sometimes we got doubt. But I'm here to tell you today, in every situation, be careful. In every situation, Trust God in every situation. Yeah. Pray. Yeah. In every situation, be anxious for nothing. Chill out. Take a chill pill. Yeah. What's a chill pill anyway? I never knew. They used to... <laughs> What's a chill pill? Uh, in every situation, be prayerful. Breathe. Yeah. That's right. They say count to 10. Yeah. Calm down. Relax. Yeah. Hang loose. Yeah. Be cool. In every situation, you must, here it is, be thankful. Yeah. Yeah. The text says we got to be thankful. Thanksgiving in every situation. Now, that sounds a little crazy. Why would I thank God for my hurt? Why would I hate, thank God for my praise, my pain, and my hardship in my life? That makes no sense. But if you're a child of God... Yeah. You should know that makes sense because you stand on the faith that's in you. Yes or no? That makes no sense, but either you're going to trust God or you're not. As a child of God, we must believe no weapon formed against us will prosper. Now, it may form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It may form. It, it may come. It may attack. But you can't touch his body. Jesus says, Satan, you can have Job, but you can't, you can't touch his body. You, you, his body belongs to me. His, his, you, your money may get attacked. Your child may. Ain't it funny that the devil is, he don't do new stuff. He attacks the marriage, the relationship. He attacks your money. Then if he can't get that, he attacks your health. Then he can't do that, he gets your child. Then if he don't get that, he start all. He don't have new tricks. That's why we know God has given us the victory. Yeah. You just got to remember, I have what is called a faith file. If you, if you don't have one, you, you, you ought to start one. You, you ought to have a faith file. Faith file is, I got a book. Some, some of y'all call it a journal. But I have a book. And every significant thing that God's done in my life, yeah. I write down the date. I write down the issue. And I write down the hope that God gave me and how he brought me out. And when things get hard, when things get rough, I go to my faith file. And I say, God, thank you for helping me graduate from school. Thank you for sending me this way. Thank you for healing my body. Thank you. I've got a faith file. We've got to learn to be thankful. Pastor Gatt, Pastor Gatt, my pastor, he's deceased, the late Reverend Gatt. He said the Lord told him in his latter years, he said, I want you to tell the church to say thank you, Lord. Let the church say thank you. Come on, let the church say thank you, Lord. Come on, let the church say thank you. 
He said, because we don't tell the Lord thank you enough. No, 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 no. How many of y'all say, Lord, thank you for waking me up this morning? How, how many of you say? How many of y'all say? Thank you for a car to drive in. You, we so used to getting in the car, starting up. Uh, he, he told me, son, we got to remember the, the small things. I was in the hospital one day, and I couldn't swallow. And it reminded me of the small things. God, help me swallow. Lord, help me chew my, I, help me chew my food. Lord, help me get out this bed. Lord, help me put my... We got to be more thankful. Church, I'm here to tell you every situation you ought to be thankful. We need to thank God more because why? Because God saved your soul. Why? Because God justified you. Why? Because God sanctified you. Why? Because God brought you out. Why? Because God saved your soul. Why? God bought you with a price. Yes, Jesus died for our salvation. And we ought to tell him thank you. We ought to tell God thank you in the morning. We ought to tell God thank you in the afternoon. You ought to tell God thank you in the evening. You ought to tell God thank you. We need to tell God thank you all day long. We need to tell God thank you more. We need to tell God we trust him more. We need to believe him because he's fixed it. Because he's behind the scenes. I'm almost finished. He's behind the scenes working it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me get out of here. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, be prayerful, be thankful, and be joyful. And guess what would happen in verse 7? And the peace of God. Yes. That passes all understanding yeah. will guide your heart. Yeah. I'm here to tell you when you pray about your situation. Yeah. I'm here to tell you if you trust God. Yeah. I'm here to tell you when you call on the name of God. Yeah. The Bible is clear. It said he will give you peace. Yeah. Uh, this word peace means garrison. Uh, it's, 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 it's an example, and I'm finished. It's an example of a soldier on patrol. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 it's, a, it's, it's an example of a soldier on guard duty. Yeah. Uh, God say, I will guard your heart. Yeah. It's like God is patrolling your heart. God has got a garrison around your heart. God's got a garrison around your mind. I don't know about you, but I need somebody to guard my heart. Yeah. Every now and then, I need somebody to guard my mind. The Bible said, put your mind stayed on Jesus, and he will keep you in perfect peace. I don't know what you're going through, but I'm here to tell you, you got to be prayerful. I don't know what you're going through, but stop being so worrywart. Stop worrying about all these things. Either you're going to trust God, or you're not going to trust God. Put your mind on Jesus. He will keep you in perfect peace. The Bible said, in this world, you're going to have trouble? Yeah. Trials and tribulations. But don't worry about it. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Hold on to Jesus Christ. Hold on. Hold on. And he will give you peace. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth now and forevermore. Amen. 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 As for me, as for me, and my house, and my house, we will, we will serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.